I didn't know much about Giyutaku uh, for a long time. Um, really just in the last couple of years since I've gotten into fishing. A friend of mine had a tuna print done and it was very striking, but what made it so unique was that it was the actual fish. It was the fish that he caught. It had the exact measurements of the sickle fins, the scars, the colors. So when you're getting a Giyutaku print, you're pretty much getting the actual identity of the animal. You're getting the scars on it, you're getting the fin sizes. Anything that reminds you of that animal is in that print, whether it's an extra hook from somebody else who caught it to a battle wound it escaped from another fish. It is the exact animal and you're pretty much immortalizing that creature. It is very personal. I, I did a, a print of a blue marlin and it had four gaff marks on it and you know I could have painted that out. I could have gotten rid of it, but I felt like there's a story attached to it. There are four people that that were pulling it in, you know, so I left it. Maybe those are the details that you're not going to get on a fiberglass mount. Leslie, we met you last summer and we kind of got a crash course in Giyutaku. So since we met last, you did Swole Fest. What are some of the projects you've worked on that you're really proud of that you've done since then? Since then, business has really picked up and um, I do a lot of fishing tournaments and fishing rodeos, but now I'm getting a lot more um, requests to do some commercial projects. I was recently commissioned by Baton Rouge Area Foundation to um, do the artwork for their brand new uh, water campus in downtown Baton Rouge. Um, that was a pretty exciting project and I've done, I've had the opportunity to, opportunity to do some complete projects at uh, doctor's offices and, and restaurants where I can lay out a concept and then just submit it. And a lot of times with something like an alligator, um, you really get a lot of detail right there pulled directly off of, of the animal. And with something like um, the sockele, there's so many little intricate um, details and spots and specks and scale patterns involved where whenever I get home I'll stretch it and just start going back over it and adding those little um, things that make the fish and give it its character. The tuna tail that I brought obviously was a little dried out. It was a couple weeks old and it had been in the freezer. Is it harder to do smoother, smoother animals like that, like a tuna or a catfish or something that doesn't have the pronounce, does that require more brushing up and more tuning? It does. Um, something like a, a, like a, I mean tuna have scales, they're just really tiny. Um, there is like a pattern on their skin that you can capture. Whenever it's dried out it's sometimes harder to, to do that. Um, but it does, it requires a little bit different touch. I mean every, I feel like every animal requires a different touch and a different application to the paint. Um, something like the soccer like you go you brush in the direction of the scales so that you're not pulling the scales back and you know loosening them up where they come up with the print. Uh, something like the tuna it may not matter quite as much but you're dealing with the brush strokes appear appearing on the um, on the fish and without a lot of pronounced scales you really see those brush strokes so you want to try to avoid it's like finding a balance between brushing it on, removing the brush strokes, you know, but each one poses its own set of challenges and opportunities to make a really good piece of art. A lot of times the first print that I pull is, it might be okay, but it's not necessarily um, my favorite or the one that captures the most detail. It depends on how wet the animal is. Um, sometimes the paint gives it, the first print kind of provides a layer and a barrier for, you know, fish are wet. I mean, they, they bleed, they, you know, they have, the, the, the slime and the, the secretions in it and um, sometimes the paint after like the first couple pulls it, it provides a barrier and then by the third or fourth you can you can really get some good detail um, with them. Uh, you've done everything from you know a pound and a half sockele to a thousand pound marlin. Um, what's the timing for, for say an average fish, a red snapper, it's a very popular thing to do if somebody wants a complete one, how long does that take? 
It can happen quick, but it depends on how backed up I am. I mean, if I get to working on it right away, you can have it back within just a couple weeks. And when you sit down and do it, uh, what does one print like that take in terms of time? I mean, we did, we, we knocked out 10 prints here in a little over an hour, but when you really do that extra added element, how much more work is involved? Um, I can, sometimes with, um, with fish that have like a lot of um, really pronounced scales and, and patterns, I can spend a solid two days working on it. Um, you know, with other demands going on, I mean, I might work, at, work on it a couple hours every day over the course of a few weeks, but um, I just take it one layer at a time, one mark at a time, and um, until I feel like, oh, that's it, there you are. So since we discussed Giyutaku last year, uh, you kind of see a little bit more in-depth elements to the art. What we did last year was a crash course, the basics on how you can do your own prints. But when you take the time and you're not in an area where the elements affect you, as in wind or sun, if you've got a nice shaded area where the paint doesn't dry so quickly or you're not worried about your canvas moving on you, you really can pull a remarkable print. And this is something you can do too. Leslie's obviously very talented at it. She's uh, pretty much done thousands of prints and knows how to lay the canvas and paint the paint. That's something I need a lot of work on, but I think over time you get better at it. And what's neat to see is you can make multiple prints. It's not like one piece of art where if you mess it up, it's all over and you start from scratch. You can start from scratch, but it's very easy to get another pull. And in fact, with five or six different prints, they actually start to get better as you get more paint on them.